Hello everyone. Thank you for coming back to Miss Rachel Simpson's art lessons and tutorials. Um, I'm going to show you some of the steps on how to draw a bird and paint with watercolors. So this might be a couple of different things for you to challenge or try. Um, first, I'm just using uh, mixed media paper, but you could use thicker paper. Uh, drawing paper would work as long as it's not too thin like printing paper. Uh, to draw this bird, I'm going to show you a couple ways to do it. Um, the first step is get a pencil and get an eraser and then you're going to draw the body which is like an egg shape or an oval when you look at it this way. <clears throat> so this shape and I'm drawing very lightly when I draw my shape so I can erase it okay for my body and for my head so here I might just go all right I'm gonna erase this line so I can't see it very well okay and you can take an eraser and just lightly erase it so it's not too dark you don't want it to be too dark and then after you do the head shape which is, see how it's slanted this way and the head is right there. Then I'm going to make the eye, which will be around there. And I'm not gonna fill it in yet. I'm just gonna draw where the eye goes. And then I will be drawing this nose, it's the start of the beak. So I'm not actually doing the whole beak, I'm just doing part of the beak. And then I'm going to do the wing. So the wing shape starts like this and it goes to the back. Then the tail, which comes from here and it goes almost straight down. And this is the bottom of the tail too. Next, we're gonna go back to the head and we're gonna fill in that neck with the fluffy fur that will be there later. And we're gonna add a little more to that beak because the top of a bill of a beak, there's usually this area for the breathing. And I can't remember what that thing's called, but. <laughs> uh, so after we get that done, then we're gonna go back to this wing area and we're going to draw a loop here and that's the end of the feather and it's gonna go all the way back up so it kind of goes like this and if I look at it kind of funny it reminds me of pointing a finger like that so you could turn your paper if that's easier and then we will figure out this tail down here so this tail here is gonna come down and it's gonna be at an angle like that. Next we have the legs. Now the legs, first you got the fluffy part of the leg connected to the body. And then there's two of them, two little humps for his two legs. Here's where we're gonna get our eraser out, erase that line behind there, see. Okay, and then let's see, we've got the next step for more details of the feathers. So there's two patterns here. There's a pattern that goes like this. And I'm gonna draw kind of heavy so you can see it. And then there's a pattern that goes down to see this curve down here. So this curve is gonna go back up. And there's another one for another feather grouping when they fold their feathers and their wings. Now down to the tail, usually when you see a bird land on a tree branch, they actually have more than one feather on their tail. So we're gonna add another layer behind of a tail feather that goes back behind it. The other thing that we're gonna want is his legs. He needs to have two lines for this leg. And then we'll notice how they're angled like this. Legs for birds don't go straight down, they kind of angle out. And this one. Again, if you need to erase it because you made that line too big, you can. And also we're gonna go back up to the head and 
figure out, see this crest, his feathers right here? So we are going to draw that. The next step is you draw this arch going over his eye, kind of like a giant eyebrow, and out. And before we get farther with that, I also want you to see, pay attention to see his cheeks and his face. So we're gonna draw like a very loose backwards C right here. I'm gonna actually draw it a little differently. We're gonna go like that, there we go. And then we will be doing a little more for the front of his beak. So this beak went right here, but his neck has to be fluffy. So it's gonna to attach to the rest of his head there. Now, working back this way to the feathers, because there's a lot more detail down here, okay? So what we're gonna work on is lines first before you add the details. So remember that there's a pattern like a sun right here or a flower. I'm gonna add rays or lines for the feathers and the wings here first. Then I'm also gonna do a few down here. But notice I'm not drawing all the way down. I'm just drawing three lines. And then in this one, this one will have a couple lines too. And to make this help that help you make sense of this, I'll show you what I mean. These lines will turn into something. They'll turn into those cool feathers. So this one has a hump like that. And that one. Now we're gonna erase a little bit. Here we go. And this will go back up here. See how that curves up? The legs will also have, oh, one more feather here. Down here, there will be some more feathers here. So we'll just fill this in, see? That's gonna go up. It's gonna go there. There we go. And up here, you will probably see that there's some detail there, so we might put some there. But before we get to that, let's fix these legs. We have sticks coming out, but we don't have feet yet. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I make my first toe on each one. And I'm trying to make it curved like it's going to be over a branch. It's going to have two toes on this side. Birds usually have three ones in the back, like this, and two are in the front. Next, I'm going to take my pencil and draw the start, not the whole branch, but the start of the branch that the tree, that he's landed on the tree. Okay, so we've got that part done. We've got these feathers down here on this wing. We do need to add some feathers onto the tail. So here's how I do this. And I didn't do it on this one, but you know what, I should. So here's how I would add some tail feathers. I'm gonna do some lines like that all the way down to the end of the tail okay so here we go there we are all right so we're almost done this is pretty cool next we're going to add some feather details for his face let's start at the face because we haven't touched that in a while it looks like he's he's missing things there so for his face we're going to go like lines like this arching up for the feathers and this is going to go back behind his head look kind of like a fun mohawk for this bird we need to fill that in right here and i'm going to use my eraser and erase some of these extra lines inside the head so we don't see them all because i'm going to fill it in with feather marks right here and feathers right here and his beak needs to have the top and the bottom separated right and his eye will be filled in so there's some feathers around his head Just soften it up a little bit you can actually add some 
lines that kind of make the edges of his of his belly and his chest a little softer okay and you can add some more soft feathers on above his leg area okay there we go now to soften up his wings we're going to add a few i'm going to like erase this line a little bit and we're going to add now what i'm doing i'll show you up close what i'm doing is i'm kind of going like this but really really small on his wings doing it there and I'm gonna do it uh, above his wing here okay so hopefully this will give you an idea of how to draw a bird and then you can paint him the branch you know branches are kind of fun because they're they're organic they're oblong you don't have to make it perfect or symmetrical you can just make it kind of wavy and choose to make it go out a little bit like he's on the end of this tree branch all right so uh, there's a few more details I think I would add and that would be some more feather lines in here but overall I'm pretty happy with this bird it's got the start of all of the areas outlined for my painting. Okay, so let's go back to this first drawing that I did. I drew it twice so that I'd have one to, as a backup for painting on. Okay, and now I've drawn it three times, but that's, that's for your, your input and your helpful be helpful for you I mean so next you have a choice here you can either choose to leave it with pencil and paint with watercolor or you can use a sharpie marker or a ballpoint pen even or a flare pen any kind of black pen and outline marks on your bird if you want to I think it's gonna be kind of fun so I'm gonna outline one of these birds if I can open the cap oh my goodness it's stuck Oh, it's really stuck. Okay, so I'm going to outline this bird here. I'm not going to outline all of it, but I'll give you an idea. So here's what I was thinking. To make the lines kind of pop, I was going to do some highlights with my marker. Maybe not everywhere, but who knows? Just kind of go with it. It's kind of fun to see what we'll outline and how it'll look when it's all painted. Like I am choosing not to draw all of those lines. I think I'm gonna leave some undrawn. With just pencil and some will have markers. See there. All right. This tail definitely the outline or contour line. And his legs. Now I'm not trying to be exact with my pencils because guess what? I can erase all those lines that I drew with pencil and you won't see those marks anymore. All right, so here's the bird with the outlines. I think it looks pretty nice like that. I'm not gonna outline the branch. Just wanted to focus on some of the bird. And I'm gonna take my eraser and just gently erase some of those marks. So it's paler. Okay, so here we go. I've got a couple of paints out for watercolors that I wanted to show you different options that you might have at home. You might just have a Crayola uh, type selection, which is fine. You might have a 
travel kit of a watercolor kit that you can take and use. Some people have that, not everybody, but that's an option. I just sprayed water on all of my palettes because it would re, um, rehydrate those paints and be easier for me to use later. You can also use watercolors if you have any in tubes to put them on a palette and use them this way. So any one of these will work to paint with watercolors. There's even watercolor crayons out there and watercolor pencils. There's all sorts of materials out there for you to use. Okay, so I didn't get very many small brushes. Let's see. Oh, here's a few. Okay, here's a few brushes. This is kind of big. All right, so now um, I will show you the painting part. So when we get to this part, I'm going to use my lightest colors first, right? Before I use any of my darker colors. So I'm going to use yellows. And I'm going to use white to pale, make some pale areas. Now, I am choosing to put yellow on this bird. I may change my mind. I may have him become a brown bird because you do often see birds with shades of brown in them and black. But no matter what you choose to do with it, it's really up to you. Do you want your bird to have some black? Do you want to have um, black? I think pale black might be fun to put on the crest of this bird. I just have to make sure I don't put too much water on here. Yeah. And maybe I'll go back and I'll darken it a little bit more. But you can choose to have a little bit of color or a lot of color. I love using watercolors because you can, um, you can kind of blend it as you go and you can experiment. Um, so like watercolors, sometimes people get frustrated with watercolors because they're like, oh, it's so much paler than I thought it would be. And it does, it is pale at first. You have to add more layers of paint to make it darker. I think I'm gonna have some brown with his hair, his fur on top too. So what I'm saying is that um, you have to go slow and be patient with watercolors and not put all of them together um, all at once. Because if you put all the colors down on the paper at once, it'll become a big wet mess. <laughs> And maybe you've experienced that before and you're like, oh, that's why, you know, watercolors are something I still need to learn how to do. So I am choosing to do just some touches here and there of some brown. And I might go back and put some shades of black here. It's up to you. You know, the nice part about this is you can play with it. You can do it, a, you know, a little bit now. Let it dry come back to it in a few minutes or later in the day or tomorrow. Don't do it all at once when you paint. I think painting is better if you actually like slow down because when you slow down, you might notice something that you didn't notice before when you were listening to music or getting distracted by the TV show going in the background or something like that. So I'm gonna stop and a pause with the painting and I'm going to think about how I want to add more color. So for now, I'm going to pause with this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to play another segment of this lesson with painting with watercolors uh, and show you the finished product of this bird after a little while so that you can just practice the drawing and see how you do with that before you get to the painting. All right. Thank you so much. And um, I appreciate you coming and watching uh, Rachel's Whimsical Arts videos with Miss Rachel Simpson. That's me. And please leave comments or questions and I will get back to you. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.